Hi, I'm Ben Wilmore, and I'd like to show you how to watermark images in Adobe Lightroom. It's often nice to watermark images that you might post on the internet because you might want your web address or logo in the corner, or if you're going to deliver an image to a client and you don't want them to use that image accidentally for a final purpose, you might want to watermark it with something like proof only or in progress or some other wording so that the client won't assume it's a final image. To do so in Lightroom, there are two kinds of watermarks we can create. We can create one that's either text or a graphic, and I'll show you how to create both. In Lightroom, on a Macintosh, you'll visit the Lightroom menu to find the choice of edit watermarks. In Windows, that is found under the edit menu instead, but regardless of where you choose it, it sends you to a screen that looks the same on Mac or Windows. In the upper right of this screen is where you can choose what type of watermark you'd like to create. We'll start with a text watermark, and then afterwards I'll show you how to do a graphic one. And you'll find here's an area called image options. You can ignore that when working with text. Below that we have our text options, and before you even get in here and start to specify those settings, you'll want to visit the lower left of your screen, which is where you actually type in the text you'd like to use. In my case, I have a copyright symbol and then my name. You can type in however long of text you'd like there, and then near the upper right of this screen is where you control what that text looks like. Here I can choose the typeface I'd like to use. I can choose if I want it to be bold, italic, and so on. And if I want to change the size of the text, the easiest way I find to do that is to simply look at the text on top of your image, and there'll be a little dot in the corner, and just grab the dot and pull, and then you can make it larger or you can make it smaller. Now, if you don't see text on top of your image right away, it usually means that either you have not typed anything in the lower left, or the color of your text happens to match the color of the photograph that's underneath. So by changing the settings on the right side of the screen, you should be able to get it to stand out from the image. If you look below, there is a choice called color, where there's a little rectangle I can click on. That will pop up a color picker, and I can choose any color I would like. Most of the time, I either choose white or gray for my watermarks, simply because I don't want it to compete with the colors that would be found in the photograph, but you can make it any color you'd like. Once I've chosen the color I would like to use, in my case just an off-white, uh, below that we have a choice of adding a shadow. I like to add a shadow underneath my watermarks because you never know what kind of photograph this might be shown on, and I want it to separate from both uh, bright photographs and dark photographs. So in this case, if I have a near white color, and this ever appears on a white background, that drop shadow will help it separate. Uh, I do have a choice of how opaque the shadow should be, how far the shadow should be offset from the text itself, and then a choice called radius, which controls how soft the edge of the shadow uh, is rendered, and the angle, which is what direction from the text is the shadow found. If you don't want a drop shadow, all you have to do is turn off the checkbox and all those sliders will be ignored. Below that, we have a choice called watermark effects. And this is where I can lower the opacity of my watermark, and therefore it won't completely obscure my view of the image it's being applied to. And we can control if the size is proportional to the image, or if we want to have it uh, fit or fill the image. Fill isn't used very often for text, but for a graphic watermark, it can be nice if you want your logo to completely fill the image. Below that, we have a choice called inset, and that means how much should it be spaced away from the edge of the document. And so if I come in here and specify how, how uh, far I would like it, or how large I would like it, then here I can move it so it's going to be a little bit away from the left edge, move it vertically a little bit away from that bottom edge. But in the end, here is a choice called anchor, and this determines what corner of the image the the watermark will be anchored to, I can make it upper left, upper right, and so on. In a moment, I'll show you how to make a preset, and I generally make a preset for all four corners plus the middle. And then when I'm actually applying that watermark, I don't have to return to this screen each time to change settings. Instead, I simply choose a different preset. Uh, so in this case, though, we'll do the upper right corner, because I think it'll separate from the image in this case. 
Once you have everything dialed in exactly the way you like it, you can test it on multiple images. If you happen to have had multiple images selected before you came into this screen where we could edit our watermark, near the top of my screen you'll find two arrows and that will allow me to cycle through the other images that I have selected as well so I can see if it would be appropriate for more than one picture and fine tune the settings. Once the settings are dialed in exactly the way I want, on the left side of my screen there's a pop-up menu. This is where you can access presets. And to save the settings we currently have as a new preset, you have the choice right there to do so. I'm going to give this a name and I'm just going to call it copyright BW for my initials. And then I'm going to say UR for upper right. I'll hit create and then all I'm going to do is change which corner this is anchored to. I'll anchor it to the lower right and I'll simply save another preset with the exact same name and just specifying the different corner. I'm not actually going to go through that because you can see here I already have some saved. One for each corner and one for centered. But the amount of time it took to generate them was very short because all I was doing between each one was changing the anchor point. All right, now that we've made a text-based watermark, let's create one out of a graphic file. We can use either a JPEG image or a PNG image. The advantage of PNG is it can include transparency. So that's usually what's best for logos and if you have stylized text that you happen to have made in Photoshop. In the upper right, I switch from the choice of text to the choice of graphic. The moment I do, it pops up asking me where the graphic file is. In here, I have a PNG file and I'm going to hit the choose button and you'll see it applied to the image. And at this point we have the same general options. We skip over this area called text options. You see it's all grayed out because we're not working with text. The area above where it says image options just would allow you to switch which image you're working with if you clicked on the choose button. So in general we have the same options down here for how we position and size our graphic. Just like with the text I can grab the corners here and pull control how large it is, and with these little anchor dots I can control where it would be positioned. Once I get it all set up I again return to the upper left and I save it as a preset. Usually saving multiple presets for different anchor points. Once I'm done doing that I can click the save button and then if I actually want to, since I actually didn't save that preset, it make sure I, I do save it. I'll call it badge uh, top center hit create. But once I've done that, then I have multiple places within Lightroom where I can apply it. And if you go to the file menu and you choose export, you will get to this screen where you have many different options for exporting your picture. In one section of those options is called watermarking. And right there, just with a little checkbox, you can tell it which watermark you'd like to use in this pop-up menu will have the exact same choices that we had when we were generating our presets on the upper left of that screen. And whenever I set up my export settings with my watermark I have the option in the lower left to make an export preset with the add button. The other place I can go to for this is when I'm printing. If I go to the print module in Lightroom, there are many different settings, but within this area called page, you will find a checkbox called watermarking. And again, there'll be a pop-up menu with the exact same presets that you've created when you were in the watermarking uh, screen. The third place I could go to to apply my watermark would be when I'm applying or creating a slideshow. And in the slideshow options, you will find it under the heading of overlays. And again, it's the same thing, just a checkbox in a pop-up menu to choose which preset you'd like. Therefore, it's nice if you spend just a little bit of time creating maybe five or six presets, then applying it only takes a few seconds. As a bonus, let's take a look at how to remove the background on a logo. Oftentimes, you might end up scanning a logo, or maybe it's your signature you'd like to use, and you just take a white sheet of paper, sign your name, and then scan it. Well, if we want to use that as a watermark in Lightroom, it would be most ideal if the background was not white. Instead, it was transparent. To do that, we need to switch over to Photoshop where I have an example image. And the first thing we need to do is ensure that the background surrounding this graphic is solid white. And if you just took a photograph of it or scanned it, it's probably not quite white. We also need to make sure the graphic itself is solid black. 
To do so, go to the image menu, choose adjustments, and you'll find a choice called levels. When you're in levels, there's an upper right slider which forces areas to white. And you want to pull that in until the white of the paper is truly white. You can usually tell when that happens by looking at this little uh, bar chart that's known as a histogram. You'll see a prominent tall area near the right and you'll need to move this slider to the left side of it. The slider on the left side forces areas to black and oftentimes when you scan, your signature or logo won't come in as solid black. And when that's the case, if you look at this bar chart known as a histogram, there will be a hump that's not quite all the way to the left. And what you want to do is move this slider until it goes just to the right side of it. And what that'll do is force your logo to black and the other slider would force the background to white. I'll click OK. Now we just need to somehow get that so the background goes away. And there's a relatively quick way of doing that. If you go to the window menu, you're going to find a choice called channels. You don't actually have to know anything about channels to get this to work, but all you need to do is move your mouse on top of the miniature version of your logo that's going to appear at the very top of the channels panel. With your mouse on top of that picture, hold down the command key on a Mac, control if you're on Windows, and just click. When you click, you're going to get a selection on your picture. It's going to have selected all the areas that are white. And you could, at this point, hit the delete key to remove that background. Or if you want the utmost clarity in your logo, I would suggest an alternative, which is to go to the select menu and choose inverse. Therefore, you'll have the logo itself selected. And then finally, in your layers panel, go to the bottom where you have a half black and half white circle and choose solid color. What that will allow you to do is choose any color you want for your logo. So if you have a corporate color, you're welcome to pick it here. And as a final step, throw away the bottom layer that contains your original scan. That will be the cleanest version of your logo. And now you can save this by going to the File menu. And the file format you want to use is called PNG. Uh, and if you do, you can maintain that transparent background to use in Lightroom.